take a minute here and talk about the uh, 35Z5 GT rectifier tube. Just a little history, I was doing some uh, reading. It was a cool article back from uh, May 1949 by uh, John T. Fry, Max Radio Service Shop. Some of you guys that have been doing uh, radio repairs for a long time may have read the article. But uh, the 35Z5 GT tube, when jarred, can create uh, noise picked up by the uh, loop antenna in our particular design. And of course, when that's picked up by the uh, loop antenna, it's amplified and uh, makes its way all the way through to the uh, loudspeaker. So at one time, they were actually considering using uh, tube shields around the uh, rectifier tube to help mitigate the issue. Of course, that was uh, short-lived and they elected to um, just ignore that due to the uh, short life of the uh, rectifier tube itself. But kind of an interesting story. So the 35Z5GT tube is a half-wave rectifier and you can see it was very common in the AC-DC sets or All-American 5 sets for this period of time. The uh, filament voltage is 35 volts as denoted there by the uh, prefix and it's uh, rated at 0.15 amps or 150 milliamps. Now if you look down here to the uh, dial lamp itself, in our case a type 47 lamp was used or bulb, rated at 6.3 volts and uh, 150 milliamps as well. And we'll talk about the uh, configuration here in just a moment. Something else pretty cool, the uh, life of the bulb was uh, estimated to be 3,000 hours, or about 125 days. Even though this particular receiver has a, a common or floating ground, I think I mentioned in the previous video, I did reorient the wiring and move the uh, switch back over to the uh, hot side of the uh, AC input and the uh, neutral itself back down to the floating ground. This will make the set uh, safer, but again, uh, the safest way to operate this particular receiver would be with an isolation transformer. So you can see here when the AC comes in, that being the hot side, we're connecting to uh, pin number two of the uh, rectifier tube, and also to the uh, pilot lamp in our case that type 47, through it to pin 3 of the rectifier. As I mentioned earlier, I was talking about the pilot lamp, you can see in this case the uh, current itself is divided between the uh, filament tap, pins number 2 and 3 on the uh, rectifier tube, and then that current continues to flow from uh, pin 3 back over to uh, pin 7, over to uh, pin number 2 of the uh, 50L6 in our case, which is called out as uh, V4 here on the schematic. One thing you'll notice too, which is uh, most common, is the uh, routing here of the uh, filament voltage. You can see when we leave the uh, rectifier here to look at the order after we pass through the uh, rectifier tube, the uh, normal wiring would be to go to the audio output tube next, which is uh, V4, then to the IF amplifier, V2, then the oscillator mixer, V1, and end up terminating here at the uh, second detector, AVC. And the reason that was made last in series in most cases you can see that ties back to our uh, B minus, and that helps uh, mitigate hum due to the uh, high gain of that uh, first audio amplifier. Regarding the uh, filament voltages here, again, if you look at V5, the rectifier is stated 35Z5GT, 35 volts, and then you move over to V4, 
for the audio output tube at uh, 50 volts with the uh, remaining tubes being uh, 12 volts each. So if you look at the string and voltage, add those up, end up with 121 volts. Of course, there's a little bit of voltage drop as well for that dial lamp that's uh, tapped off of the uh, rectifier tube as well. So back then, the uh, radio was engineered to work on voltages between 105 volts and 125 volts. And the uh, idea should be to keep the uh, filaments plus or minus uh, 10%. So you can also see where the plate of the rectifier tube connects over to uh, pin 3 of the tube. Where I've got the red aerodrome, typically you'll find a resistor to uh, limit current. In our particular radio design, that uh, resistor was not used just to keep the uh, cost at a minimal. So the cathode current of the uh, rectifier continues to flow through the uh, pilot lamp and that filament tap pins number two and three. And you guys have seen this. When you first power up the receiver, the resistance of the tube filaments, they're low, and the pilot lamp will kind of jump out at you. It lights up brightly until the filaments heat up and their resistance values increase. Then you'll notice the uh, pilot light seems to dim somewhat before the cathode of the rectifier heats up. And you start getting the normal plate current flowing through and then the uh, lamp stabilizes at that particular point. So the areas there denoted in blue, that's our uh, B+, plus, which we've already uh, spoke about and corrected those particular issues. Let's talk about troubleshooting real quick. Of course, cold solder joints would be an issue. Tube failures with an open filament would be very common. And you can simply just check those using your uh, digital multimeter, looking at DC resistance and checking, of course, between the uh, pins that are called out to make sure that you have DC resistance between those points. Regarding the dial lamp, let's say it's not working. You put another known dial lamp in, it still doesn't work. Well, your first uh, indicator, you've got a bad rectifier tube. So you got one section of that filament that's most likely open. And you got to realize, you know, what took that out? So the rectifier tube may have just failed due to uh, age and use, or maybe you have an AC short on the uh, B-plus side. So that's something to be mindful of, is to make sure those capacitors, as we replaced C19, A and B, in addition to C18, also the uh, plate capacitor itself that resides right off of the uh, 50 L6 to make sure it's not shorted. That's a, a very common failure point. One of the things that the uh, folks used to do to uh, troubleshoot a short, again, is to uh, unplug the receiver, turn the radio switch on, take your electrical plug and short out the uh, two prongs on the AC line cord. Then you connect one lead of your uh, multimeter to the two prongs, and then you tie your other one to the uh, cathode pin, in our case of the uh, 35Z5GT uh, rectifier tube socket. You look at DC resistance there, and what they used to look for was a reading of uh, 10,000 ohms or less would indicate a short. And again, that's where they would be suspect of the filter caps or again, that audio bypass cap 
that I just spoke of just a moment ago. So that's another technique that uh, could be used. Next, guys, I'll try to uh, troubleshoot a new issue that uh, showed up here after playing the radio for uh, a number of hours. You can see if I put my uh, lead here, if RF generator is generating a CW carrier in close proximity to the antenna. It sounds like we've got some overloading and I think we've got a problem with the uh, automatic volume control. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to take this thing back apart. We'll get it back in the uh, chassis holder and see if we can isolate the uh, issue.